Yo, what is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back for finally another PGA 2K21 tutorial video. So today is going to be marking the start of multiple tutorial videos that are going to be released over the course of this coming month. I'm going to apologize up front because I am recording for all of them simultaneously. So they may be a little sporadic in difficulty. Uh, one day you may get a little bit of an easier one. The next day you'll be getting maybe, you know, a little bit of a more advanced tactic. It's just whenever I get them done, as I'm recording simultaneously, if I feel that I have enough footage for it, I will be releasing it once I have all I need to make the video. There are some videos, though, like the one today, where I can kind of just shoot it and show you all through one course so it works out. So let's get into what we're going to be going over in today's video. And that is course management. It may be a term that you hear me say a lot in not only my TGC Tour rounds, but through my course guide rounds. And I want to give you an overall census of what I mean when I say course management. We'll start with the very basic definition of what course management is. And that is essentially playing to your strengths and avoiding your weaknesses. So for example, if your strength in your short game is, you know, a full shot instead of a pitch shot, if you struggle with pitch shots, if you struggle with partial shots, avoid those at all costs and play to what your strengths are. Using the course book, and you'll see examples of the course book when we hop in to the actual gameplay, it helps you a lot with getting yourself into situations that play to those strengths that you have. I take course management a little bit further though. That's the basic definition is just playing to your strengths, avoiding weaknesses. But maybe you have a course that doesn't play to any of your strengths or only plays to a couple of your strengths and exploits your weaknesses a lot. I take it just a little bit of a step further in saying take what the course gives you. If 85% of the holes aren't really playing to your strengths, you know, of course, try to score on those holes, but the holes that are playing to your strengths, make sure that you use those strengths to the maximum efficiency so that you can score the best in your round. So take whatever the course gives you and run with it. Another big thing is and I say it a lot in my videos, avoid a blow-up hole. A blow-up hole can erase all progress that you've made throughout the entire round. What I mean by a blow-up hole, scoring a snowman, scoring an 8, 9, a 10, 4 over, 5 over on a hole. Avoid that at all costs. If you're worried about hazards, water, big thing, water, I don't care if you hook it into the rough. Avoid a blow up hole at all costs. If you're not feeling too confident in your shot that day, you're worried about water to the right, aim that thing to the left, fast it, whatever you need to do, hook it into the rough if your confidence is low. Take what the course is giving you and avoid blow up holes at all costs. Another thing that I think people get too caught up on that's always going at the pin, always trying to get birdies, eagles. Sometimes you just got to be happy with par. Par and golf is great. So while the basic definition is play to your strengths, avoid your weaknesses, I think that that longer list sums up what I see as course management when I say the term course management. So I'm going to take you through a round on some holes that I've chosen from the course that I've selected, which really makes you think about course management. Uh, and that's the Revival Club. It's a little bit of an extreme example when it comes to course management, with the way that the greens are settled, the fairways, the shots that you have to make. But if you can get good at an extreme level of course management, then the mild level of course management will come second nature. Also, <laughs> just a disclaimer, don't look at my score. Don't look at the strokes, just because it's just a lot of like resetting and trying to get the ball into position that shows what I'm trying to tell you. So let's hop onto the course, Revival Club, and let's go through examples. 
that'll hopefully give you a better of an understanding of course management and how to work the course to your advantage. So the first shot I want to take a look at is our second gear in to the par five of the very first hole. So if we're looking at this green, we see what shots we don't want to miss and the shots that give us the best chance at getting a birdie or a par. So that's what we are striving for each hole. We want a birdie or we want a par. Now with this shot, you could go right at the pin. Absolutely. Uh, this leaves you open to go right at the pin as well. It is a par five, so you have a little bit more strokes to work with. You can go at it, try to get your eagle. The thing with this shot is, let's say you're going at the pin and you slow it. That shot is going to end up right up on that hill, perched up, and you may have the potential of having to putt down this hill towards the hole and put yourself into a potential of overshooting and going down the hill. Then you're going to have to come back up for your birdie. Maybe you fast it and you, you, know, you miss hit and you're putting a, a 10-footer for par and all of a sudden you're getting a bogey. So for this hole in particular, we want to play to our strengths, but also take what the course is giving us. This course is giving us an easy waste zone on this second shot down on the left side of the green. This sets us up into a position to take a nice splash shot up to get ourselves close to have an easy birdie. It also gives us the ability to shoot up the hill. I am a big, 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 Big fan of going uphill. Downhill, you can really get into trouble, especially if you get into fasting on, on a downhill lie. This gives us an uphill lie to an uphill perched green so we can maybe stick this close and get ourselves a birdie. So for this shot in particular, we want to pick our landing zones. And those landing zones are here and here. This puts us into a position if we fast it, we still have the potential of landing it in this zone. And if we slow it, it might actually get up onto the green and be an all right shot for a potential eagle. It gives us some wiggle room for this shot that keeps us in contention for the birdie or a par. So we're going to play this out short. Here's what that shot looks like. Funnel down into this zone. And now we have an easy splash shot up here for our potential birdie. Maybe we even make it for an eagle. Here's what the shot looks like, let's say if we fast it. So we fast it, it's drifting over to the left, going a little long, but that's all right. It still funnels down into this little waste zone and we still have a good chance getting up and down for a birdie or at least getting a par. This shot right here on the second is showing off playing to your strengths and weaknesses. For me personally, I'm pretty confident off, off the tee and I am better at shots that are in the splash flop pitch region i am more confident in those shots i feel like i can stick those shots a lot better than i can if i'm just bringing in a wedge me personally i am also very confident in my recovery game especially from short range so if i do end up miss hitting this ball and i fast it and go over the bunker to the left or i slow it and go over to the bunker to the right i am more confident again in sticking that ball from short range than I am at playing a wedge or an iron in this hole. But let's say you're more confident in, I don't know, the, the region of a buck 20 to a buck 40. That's where the course book comes in very handy. You can pick the distance of your clubs and you can see what shot or distance you have to hit to put yourself into position to play to your strengths. So if you're confident at 120 to 140, you're more confident with a full wedge or a full iron instead of pitching, splashing, flopping. Pull up the course book, see where you have to hit it to get yourself into your comfort zone. This is a huge tool. I feel like people do not use this enough to play to their strengths, but it's something that can be used very wisely throughout every single hole and every single round that you play. We're going to take driver here, though, and we're going to try to put this right through the middle. So I get myself into a position that I'm confident in for where I can splash, flop this up for potentially a nice birdie opportunity. Or 
We'll just trade it for Eagle. Whichever one, you know, I mean, hey, 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 whichever, whichever, whichever one happens. We either, we're either playing it for a potential birdie <laughs> or, or we're splashing it in uh, for an Eagle. You know, which, whichever one, whichever one happens first. So I chose this course because almost every single hole puts you into position of doing some course management. So if we look at this green right here, heavy sloping out from left to right, it has a waste zone down to our right, but it evens out a little bit at the hole, so we can be a little bit more aggressive on this. But we know that we don't want to miss right, because if we miss right, that thing runs all the way off, and it puts us into a position of having a lesser chance of getting a birdie. Sometimes on greens, you just got to aim it for a spot that puts you into a position of getting birdie. You do not have to go at every single hole. Sometimes it's best just to put it into the middle of the green or middle of your landing zone and give yourself a 25 footer for birdie. Because after you put yourself into position for that, sometimes you make them. But if you don't, you've probably been using my putting method or a putting method uh, that works for you that you can at least leave yourself close enough to clean up for par. Sometimes you just got to be happy with par. So here we're going to be playing to what the green is giving us here on hole number three on this par three. We're going to be aiming for a landing zone somewhere left side of green and have that ball funnel back towards the hole. So we've hit it left side green, it's landed, and now it starts funneling all the way back towards the hole. So we've left ourselves here with a 17 footer, not a terrible amount of break, and now we can play for our birdie, or if we can just get it close enough, at least get ourselves a par. Another par three here on number four. Another example of having regions of this green where we don't want to be and an overall region of where it would be okay if we landed. So here on hole number four, we know we don't want to be left. Being left down in the rough here off the green leaves us with a horrendous shot up two platforms to try to land on that second platform of this green to potentially give ourselves a par. It also could leave us left of hole where we're putting up this monster hill in order to get our birdie. We also, also don't want to aim too far to the right because if we hit it too poorly to the right, we may have a downhill chip or splash shot which could get away from us very quickly and run us down the hill to the left. So the region, it is a tight landing zone. Like I said, this is a, a very extreme example for a course and course management. But our landing zone is just anywhere in this region is what we are looking to land on. If we put it a little bit right, that's okay because it funnels back to the left. We just want to avoid anything too far right. So we're going to play this ball out right side on the second platform of the green try to at least give ourselves the possibility of hitting a bird. All right, I faceted a touch. That's okay. We aimed it far enough to the right that we still leave ourselves with a nice little nine-footer for a birdie. So I still faceted it. But that's still okay, because I was aiming it right enough that if I would have hit it perfect, I would have had a chance at a birdie. I fasted a little bit, still have a chance for a birdie. If I would have slowed it a little bit, it still would have funneled back, and I still would have a chance for, for birdie. All right, we're not gonna leave ourselves in the best position here for the second shot, but here is an example of taking what the green is giving us. So as we're looking into this green, you can see 
that this hole is sloping completely out from front to back. It's sloping in the fairway. It's sloping on the green. It's even sloping out downhill past the hole. When you're hitting into something that has a downhill slope into it, it's going to catapult the ball a little bit further, decrease spin, and give yourself a little bit more of a second jump or potentially a little bit more of a roll depending on what kind of shot that you're hitting into. it. So you can see this is all downhill. All downhill. For this shot, we are going to be aiming this short because we want to take advantage of the downhill sloping on the fairway and on the green. We want to try to run this up more towards the hole. If we slow it, it's fine because the sloping on the right side will bring it back to the left. If we fast it, it's fine. It's still gonna go past the hole. It's still rolling back towards the hole, even if we fast it a touch. So we're gonna be aiming this short, getting ready for the wind and the lie. I fasted it, but again, it's okay. This wind's bringing it back. We landed short, it rolled out. Not the best, not the best of shots. We have a longer birdie shot, but even with the fast, we still have a better chance at making birdie. Uh, just to show you a little bit less of a fast and, and, and what that looks like, I still fast this shot a little bit, but uh, this is a, a little bit less of a fast. You can see it come in, we're landing it short. It gets that big kick, it's rolling down this hill. But we're in a much, much better position for a potential birdie. All right, so again, this course is perfect. Uh, but here we have an example of a drivable par four. So this position on the green is a nightmare. If we're looking at this shot here, the first instinct that I have is go for it. Just go for it. But think about what going for it means here. Let's say I hit the most perfect drive that I possibly can. Into the wind, downhill, it hits right where I want it. But look at this position. A little bit left, you're rolling off into the left, into a huge waste area, into the rough, having to come back up the hill. Let's say I fast it. Oops, fasted it. What does that mean? Oh, that means that I'm going down the other side of this green. Uh, it puts you into a position where it's a... It, it can be an all right situation, but it could be extremely terrible. If I fast this ball, it puts me even further off to the left, where I have to make even a better shot to avoid rolling down the backside. If I slow this ball, it puts me into a position of having to come out of the bunker or coming out of the rough, which is even worse. Coming out of the bunker or the rough. Maybe I fast it. Maybe it goes past the hole. Oops, rolls all the way down on the other side. For this position... This par four, no reason to go for this. It puts you into a position that's just terrible for the outcome that we're looking for, which is birdie or par. A back tee position maybe a little bit different. Maybe I go for it because it's a little bit flatter and I have a little bit more room to miss on that back tee position. Maybe I do drive it here. But for this tee position, no point. No point in going for this. So that brings us back to our course book. Play to your strengths. Is your strength a pitch shot? Play to that. Is your strength, again, a full swing? Play to that. Use the course book to find the distance that you are most comfortable at. And also, take what the course gives you. Pitches might not be your strongest suit, but you saw that green. It is perched up on a very, very narrow landing zone. You need that ball to stick and stop. The best shot to have to stick it and get it to stop is a pitch shot. So maybe, even though it may not be your strongest tool, the course is giving you that pitch shot to give you the potential of getting your birdie or your par. Use the course book. Whatever you feel most comfortable with, go with it. For me, again, I like the shorter shots, pitch shots, splash shots, flop shots. So I'm going to be taking a three wood and just getting this close enough here on the right side of the green so that we can pop up a nice pitch shot and get this thing hopefully to stick at the pin. What do we do here? Get ourselves into a nice region for a sand wedge pitch. So that's just a few examples of course management and how you can 
use your strengths, avoid your weaknesses, take what the course gives you, and hopefully score the best round that you can, whether that be just shooting by yourself, shooting with the buds, shooting on more competitive like TGC Tours, whatever it may be. Hopefully this gives you, especially if you didn't quite understand, because some people some people don't like golf in real life, or if they do golf, maybe they just hack it around. Course management is huge in, in real life. Knowing when to just aim for the middle of the green, knowing when to lay up, knowing when to just pitch it out of the trees instead of going for it. Those scenarios really shave strokes off in real life, and it also shaves a ton of strokes off out on the virtual golf course as well. When you plateau in, in golf in real life, course management usually is what takes you to the next step. Looking at it in an overall standpoint, my view is always 18 decent or good shots is better than one great shot. Because in order to get that one great shot, you're probably going to hit nine bad shots. So know when to play is safe. Always play to your strengths. Try to avoid at every possible turn your weaknesses. Head out into the course, and hopefully this helps you shave some strokes off your rounds. Most importantly, thanks for stopping by today. I greatly appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on the video. If you haven't yet, think about subscribing to the channel. Looking at analytics, 75% of you aren't subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Turn on notifications. Get notified anytime a video goes live. More tutorials are coming, so be on the lookout for all of those. This one will be added to the playlist. I will be rearranging the playlist from a more beginner to advanced format. So if you haven't checked out any of my other tutorial videos, just go to my homepage, look for the 2K21 tutorial playlist, watch from start to finish. Hopefully those will all help you get better at virtual golf, which is the main goal of my 2K content that I put out on this channel. I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world, and we will catch you on the next one.